Okay, so we got to talk about Caitlin Clark. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, oh, let me do this. You like, did her, you like heart, her heart sign. I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, well, let's cool. start doing it to me and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question is. Caitlin Clark has been receiving backlash ever since she has entered the WNBA draft. And shortly after Caitlin Clark was drafted number one by the Indiana Fever, Caitlin Clark's rookie contract had went viral. As you can see right here, here's the image, and this is Caitlin Clark's four-year rookie deal earning $338,000. And almost a week after that, it was revealed that Caitlin Clark was in talks with Nike to sign an eight-figure shoe deal. And it was later confirmed that Caitlin Clark did sign an eight-figure shoe deal with Nike with her own signature shoe. Nike started trending because they started asking how come Nike didn't sign A.J. Wilson, the best WNBA player right now, two-time WNBA champion, and two-time MVP, doesn't have a Nike shoe deal. So remember, I said Caitlin Clark has been receiving a lot of hate. Gail King had made some comments in support of, of Caitlin Clark and this is what Gail King had to say. And then Steven Jackson came out and responded to Gail King comments because now they are trying to start this race debate between Caitlin Clark and who can support Caitlin Clark. So let's check out what Gail King had to say and then I'll follow up with Steven Jackson's response. Here's a video. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you stuck around this long. I really do appreciate that, guys. Let's check out these clips right here. So happy for you guys, Coach Slater. I'm so happy. The game was such a good game. It was so close at times. And in the end, you guys pulled it out. But was there ever a point during the game when you were worried? Because I got worried. We, we were all cheering for Iowa, of course, and Caitlin Clark. But for so many people, you've got their hearts. Was there ever a point where you were worried during the game? I, I wasn't ever worried during the game. I know, you know, when we went down 10 up. So, Gail King's supposed to be somebody that's big in the journalism space, right? And I don't I don't consider her black media. Y'all y'all give her all these passes because she fuck with uh she's a um, Oprah friend. I don't give a fuck who friend she is. I don't do nothing for nobody. But you cannot demean Don uh Don Staley like that. You talking to her about winning the championship, about going undefeated, and you have the nerve to get on there and say, Well, we was rooting for Caitlin Clark and and, and you broke everybody's hearts. Who is we? Who is we? All the black people I know was rooting for Don Staley. We all fans of Caitlin Clark, but the way you put it, that shit was trash. Yeah, and and, and it's an, and I'm I'm glad I'm glad it's a new day in the media space. You know what I'm saying? Because you you say, you so say you so intelligent. You don't even say stuff like that to, to to somebody on the interview. You just demeaned her and made it about Caitlin Clark. That's trash. It's super trash. Okay, so that's Stephen Jackson responding to Gail King. Like I said. I feel like both Steven Jackson and Gail King response is trying to draw a race debate between Caitlin Clark. Same with the Nike shoe deal. And they're trying to draw this race debate between Caitlin Clark getting a shoe deal and how come AJ Wilson didn't get a shoe deal. But at the end of the day, it's all about marketing and business. Caitlin Clark is about to fill the seats next season for the Indiana Fever. And let me highlight some of the hate that Caitlin Clark has been receiving. Let's check it out right here. Uh, what do you think about Ice Cube and the Big Three offering Caitlin Clark five million dollars to play in their league? Um, well, I have, a, I have a lot of thoughts, but the first one is: so you offered the contract to a player who's not yet even in the WNBA. Mm. Big Three does not happen during overseas season, so that, that doesn't make sense. That's true. And then um, for us to get like just constantly shit on. Like, you can't even acknowledge the growth and how amazing the WNBA is, is doing because shit like this happens. When, when you don't even have over? to bring up the W. If you're going to say that it's for that, then stand on that. But I don't think it's for, I think he's trying to make a business decision, which he's a businessman. That makes sense. But to mask it in this, I want to uplift and support WNBA players and women athletes is kind of a cop out, I think. And I don't think it really makes any sense. You asked me about Caitlin. If you're going to break a record, to me, 
if it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player set it. Okay. So if, if Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm -hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, and then there's another year, you know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year to break that record. So is it truly a broken record? Yeah, that'll go in the record books as Caitlin Clark is the all-time, whatever it is. I don't even know what the number is, but that's the way it'll be. And, and I don't think it should be. Let's that's also crazy. talk about um, how much more experience that gives you over other players coming in, right? So people say, dang, like he or she's killing them. But you have a 25-year-old playing against a 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. Like, you, sh you should be killing them. Because yeah. you've been doing it a lot longer than they have. Clark right now probably takes about 40 shots a game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here we go. <laughs> I know you like that. I, I'm going to say this, and then I want to like be done with this whole conversation. So for people to come at me and say that I made those comments because I'm a racist, like, first of all, black people can't be racist. But like, that's the farthest thing from my mind. Like, I grew up in a very small West Texas town, predominantly white. My best childhood friend is white. So it's important for me that I speak up for people that look like me. Like, it's Black History Month. So, like, our ancestors fought and died for us to have opportunities that we have today. Um, I have, like, no issues with Caitlyn. Her breaking the record, I think, obviously, is a tremendous accomplishment. Although, you know, we could get into that discussion also, because there's a big debate on Lynette Woodard having yeah. the actual record. And the criticism is often very one-sided. Caitlin Clark talks her shit. Caitlin Clark is demonstrative. Caitlin Clark, people aren't bothered by that. People aren't by bothered by it because they're caught up in the narrative of, oh, here's this, you know, wonderful, uh, kin a kind soul from the great state of Iowa representing middle America. So they put all these sort of, we pre what happens in, these sports race wars is everybody projects their own shit on the people coming. They released a fever schedule. They got 36 nationally televised games. 36 of their 40 together? 40. They had one nationally televised game last year. And I was like, don't that be many dumb. This year? 36. Yeah. Unless well, we that real, means shit. Y'all gonna be playing? Like, they see the tickets sold out already. Yeah, I'm like, don't be dumb, WBA. Double prices. Like, but let's, let's be real. That, that's the Caitlin Clark the effect. Same thing with Wemby. They put him on TV every day, too. Like... Let's not overreact about this. Like, this is just smart business decisions being made. Yeah, man, that's what I said. But that's, <laughs> but the business, that's what I said, the business, for the game, for the game to grow, heads have to be cut off. Yeah. Period, right? Uh, yeah. The NBA does it all the time. You see Wimby, right, with the new Nike Wimby commercial. They're capitalizing in real time right now. And, you know, the, the dub needs to see it. They need to see, mm -hmm. all right, this is what the NBA doing. This, this, we need to do it. There needs to be a Caitlin Cart logo. There need to, there, you need to start putting these things in place so you can run with it. Yeah. Right. right? You know what That's, I mean? Like the, like the, the uh, Diana Taurasi and all that of them. It was funny. So let's, soon as that game start, burp, burp. Sit your old ass down. Yeah. Two fouls. <laughs> Sit down. And then newspaper. Caitlin like Clark, hate bodies, DT, it's a new era. Because I don't need you anymore. I feel like she kind of hating, too. But I'm saying it don't I matter. Mean, she nah, that's so, just DT. But that's just her, but it's 20 that's years. DT so let, DT. Let, let's oh, talk about she, it. So oh, Caitlin oh, Clark oh. and this whole rookie class come in. Obviously, a lot of hype, a lot of anticipation. Like you said, 36 of their 40 games are nationally televised. So Diana Taurasi has some thoughts on it uh, and let her, Caitlin and all the other incoming rookies know what they can expect when they come to the W. Uh, what will the league have in store for them when they get there? Look, SVP, um, <laughs> reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's, there's levels to this thing. And that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side. And you're going to see it on this side where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds. But you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. And, uh, you know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. So, natural, so Norris, you know, some people might think this is hate, nah, but this is nah, nothing nah, new for Taraji. This is nothing new I'm for her. A... Travel. Yeah. Carrying, pushing off. I'm going to call. I don't. 
I don't need you. Listen, you held it down for 20 yeah, years. Congratulations. She talking from, like she the 24-year-old Tarazi. Caitlin Clark will cook I mean, her right no, now. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to highlight Gilbert Arena's response is because he was spot on by saying that Caitlin Clark is WNBA's best new product. So, of course, they're going to put all their resources into Caitlin Clark. And as they should, Caitlin Clark is going to fill in a lot of seats. And a lot of people is going to either want to watch Caitlin Clark win or a lot of people is going to show up to watch Caitlin Clark lose. So, yeah, guys, that's it for today's video. If you stuck around with me this long, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That really does help these videos get pushed out to the algorithm. So smash that thumbs up button for me if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well if you're new to the channel. And while I have your attention, be sure to check out the description box on my YouTube channel where you can find other links and other ways to support my YouTube channel.